Today we are going to kind of expand upon this a little bit and um, I, I first off want to say that, uh, you know, as expected, you guys sort of, um, what, I, what I saw toward the end of class yesterday is that you guys started doing a real good job of blending your surfaces together, but you started to realize that the more compound your connection becomes, the harder it is to actually uh, blend or, you know, smooth out those surfaces using fillets. Am I right? Yeah. For those of you who tried to do the filleting. Um, even though it wasn't required. Well, today you're going to get a little bit of a taste of that as well. Um, and I can give you a few, um, a few tips for certain things. And we're going to try a couple of things out. And there are going to be a number of cases where, you know, things won't work. And, you know, uh, basically what I'm trying to show you is the way that you would want to think through how you're approaching the design. So my goal with this particular element here um, is to kind of either design the connections so that uh, they already transition before I round out the corners, or um, I can do a full rounded transition. Um, and there are a lot of different things to consider with that. And, and um, first and foremost, I think the first thing that I'm, I'm going to just first look at is truncating these corners. Okay, so that basically means if you look at my design, my my faces here actually match. They like the uh, basically the opening is what I'm getting at, right? So this profile over here matches this profile, and these two profiles match each other. So it's very easy for me to do something like a quick revolve, or um, you know, like the rotational extrusion. It's called a revolve. So I'll show you that. Um, or a number of other things. You know, I could just loft them together to make it, um, whoa, short chair. Um, so let's just start off with the revolve one, right? So um, let, let me grab this one right here. And um, basically a revolve, uh, actually, let me move this so it's not confusing. Okay, so a revolve is the same thing as a rotate, except it actually leaves an extrusion along the path. Okay, so, um, oops, I spelled it wrong. Revolve. Um, it's going to ask you for the, um, the revolution axis, so it'll ask for a start point and an end point. So I'm going to go from here to here, and then I'm actually going to pick where it starts and where it ends. So I can, now that I've already got my geometry in place, I can just go from this point to that point. And that's what it creates. So that is a rather simple way of resolving that condition, right? Because all you're doing is just, you're keeping a flat plane. And so now the only surfaces that I need to do a fillet for um, are really just, you know, the outer edge and then this one going across the center. So. That, that eliminates a couple of the issues that you all were having with some of yours. Um, and then similarly, I can do the same thing up here. So let me just replicate this real fast. Revolve from here to there. Oh, sorry, did that wrong. There to here to set the axis, and then there to there to extrude it. Now, um, I'm going to make a copy of my main pieces real fast just so you can kind of see um, what it winds up being because I'm going to quickly join them and, and merge faces and stuff like that. Um, but the the other thing that I want to, um, well, do I want to do that? I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. No, let's just start to look at what it's like to, to start filleting these corners. But in this case, I'm going to use a larger radius now to try and make it look, I don't know, more robust. I'll figure out the terminology for it later. Um, fillet surface, and my radius now, I'm going to use three feet. And I'm just going to go from there to there. And then I'm going to go from here to here. And um, this was a particular issue that some of us were having before, is that um, when this corner meets, 
it doesn't quite get resolved the way that you would expect it to um, or the way that you would necessarily want it to. So, um, you know, there, there are a couple options here that I thought of. Um, most notably, I think, um, was to actually cut this back and then you can loft the two of them together. Um, but then you still have to uh, deal with some really awkward kinds of surfaces. Additionally, if you're going from this surface to that surface, then this pops up and it gives you a little bit of an issue as well. So uh, theoretically, the, the more proper way to do it, since these are, it, they are exactly a radius of uh, three, um, would be to actually start from this point and cut it back to that point exactly, and then use that line as a revolution. So let's give that a shot and take a look. Are you guys following conceptually with what I'm saying? I'm talking a lot, but I'm not doing a lot. So that part's good. So anyway, um, let's do a, uh, how do I want to do this? Um, what's a quick shortcut? Grab this edge, copy this edge, extrude this edge, wrong edge. <laughs> All right, let's get this. There we go. Alt, click, there we go. All right, so I'm going to trim that one back. Um, trim and take that off. Now this one gets a little weird, right? Because it's not exactly um, it's not exactly planar. I'm not sure how I want to do that one yet. Hang on, get rid of this stuff. Do I have this in the proper orientation? I do not. All right. So what I'm going to do? Oh, I do. Okay, I do have a curve. That one. Okay, so I'm going to copy this from um, yeah, whatever center point's fine to there. Make that a surface, and then I can trim that off. Uh, oh, that didn't work, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> no. it might, that, well, patch might work for us. My problem now is that when I trimmed it, uh, it didn't trim it perpendicular to the curve. That's what I. That's what I need to get. I need to get it to trim it perpendicular to that curve. Um, so, I will. Uh, let's see. Can I get an intersection off of it? Let's see if I can rotate 3D. Oh, whoops. No, I don't want to do a rotate 3D. Uh, darn. Can't you change the orientation of the gumball to the object? I could change the orientation of the gumball to the object, but then the gumball is going to be misaligned with the plane. It's the plane I need to get on the object. So uh, I think what I'll do is this. I got it. Um, no, that's not perpendicular either. Well, I'll just draw a line first then. So I'm going to go line from this point to if I can get perpendicular on there. So this is a great use of the perpendicular object snap. So that just goes to the perpendicular corner. So I make sure I get that line and then I need to extrude it along this axis, I believe. Oh, I'm getting lost in this thing. Why don't you put the plane, or like this other curve, against that edge and then rotate the curve so that way it goes down? The big one that you have there? Um, because the rotate is going to rotate planar, and I need to rotate to uh, an axis. So let's try this then. I'm going to go back to this plane. Uh, Orient. Uh, hang on, I need to think through this one, actually. All right, um, so uh, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for this clever idea. 
So it looks like um, we can try this where we make a second line in there. And guys, I don't expect you to fully follow this, but I need you to pay attention. Okay. So um, I, this is the kind of creative thinking when you get yourself in a bind like this that could really help. So if you loft it, uh, it orients your, your gumball to a surface that's within it. Um, and then, whoops. And then you can extrude that. Oops, I didn't extrude it. There we go. There we go. All right, that that was a very clever idea. Thank you. Um, so, so that little um, form now you can use uh, to trim. So you use this as the cutting object. Hit enter and then trim that off. We'll get rid of that. So now this is what we have. Um, we have a, a three a radius of three feet and a radius of three feet that is perpendicular to itself. So now this is the element that you want to loft together. So, um, or rather, um, I probably want to do like a sweep on it. So what I'm going to do is a sweep two, and I'm going to do this rail and that rail, and then this is the cross section curve. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Hang on. Let's do a sweep one and go with this as the rail and that as the cross-section curve. Still not... Oh, that's right. Um, actually, patch might work in this case. Yeah, patch. That's going to pose a problem, that angle probably. Ah, darn. Yeah, let's try patch. I might need the fourth curve down the bottom. Nope. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's reading it as a network surface. Hang on a moment, just a moment again. Let me, let me go back a step and sort of redo that. So um, after trimming, yeah, after trimming these edges off so that everything was perpendicular to that thing right there, um, we'll do blend surface and we'll grab this and that and I switched it to tangent to make it tighter so that we get it a little bit smoother like this. Now we'll still have to deal with stuff down here at some point, um, but this should be a little bit better for us. So now the goal here was um, to make sure that I have just, I'm just kind of deleting some of these curves so you can see it, um, is to have just four surfaces or four surface edges that are, that are a complete network, right? So now I should be able to um, I don't know if I want to do a loft or a blend or something, but I'm going to try uh, network surface. That, 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 and that. There you go. From the beginning? Could, could I have done that from the start? Uh, no. The reason I couldn't do that from the start is because I had those weird, like, I, I, let me go all the way back uh, here with you on it. But basically, if I do um, fillet from here, sorry, fillet surface from there to there, um, see how it kind of cuts this back to that point? So that's the issue that we had to resolve. And unfortunately, because of the way it was behaving, we had to go, we had to basically like trim it back to this point perpendicular down, like right here, this point perpendicular down, and that point perpendicular across that surface. So that's the key, is that little cut back. Okay, so um, you guys are going to have that element um, recorded for you. And, you know, it's, it's stuff like that where you can kind of, I mean, we, we tried uh, loft, sweep one, sweep two, patch, blend surface, and finally wound up at network surface. That actually worked for us. And, and actually with this, we could probably use many of those um, after I, you know, finally got to a solution that could kind of work. But, um, yeah, so... Sometimes you just got to try a few out and think through methodically about, you know, how do I get the geometry that I need for this tool to work, right? In this case, it was four complete edges. Any questions? I'm sure you guys have a few about that one, or you will when you're doing it yourself. Okay.